Welcome to Pro Practice, your guide to refine, enliven, and illuminate the piano repertoire. I'm Josh Wright, and today's episode is based on the Chopin Etude in A minor, Opus 25, number 11. It's commonly referred to as the Winter Wind Etude. Just to jog your memory here, um, it starts out with a very slow, lento, It's like a calm before the storm. techniques <clears throat> uh, about how to get that uh, really fluid in the right hand and confident. Um, we're going to go over musical ideas and we're going to go over pacing and uh, structural ideas to help the piece flow but still be very interesting along the way. So it's not, uh, the piece has to absolutely have a lot of momentum but at the same time you want to take moments of uh, repose and, and relaxation in order to really let the more stormy parts push ahead. <clears throat> so let's let's just dive right in. This uh, this first part, I think it's very important not to be too cautious with this first little statement. Because if you if you're so soft, I've seen people start it out too soft and then First of all, <clears throat> he says pianissimo after the, so he says piano for here, and then he says pianissimo here, and he makes four voice harmony here. Um, so you have one voice that's piano, four voices that are pianissimo, that's going to be a challenge in and of itself. So you may want to consider going mezzo piano uh, to start with, crescendoing maybe up to mezzo forte. softer but not too soft, just piano right there, because then, in contrast, a lot of people like to, especially I noticed this in early advanced students and amateur playing, like adults who have played their whole lives but really haven't um, achieved the professional status, they like to get real nitpicky. I have a lot of <laughs> A lot of these types of adult students, and I love them to death, but sometimes they're like, well, I need to know exactly what to do, and you tell me exactly what to do, and I'll do it. Piano is a game of illusions, um, and you have to realize that you can do lots of different things and still have it sound really good. So, for instance, if I was playing at uh, the big hall at Carnegie Hall, I wouldn't start even where I just did. I would start louder, because it's such an expansive hall, even though the acoustics are great, you've got to give enough substance. So know the hall that you're playing in. If you're playing in a like a little living room like I'm in right now, you can be even maybe softer than I had said. You just know know the hall where you're at. Okay, moving on. I like to put my una corda or the far left pedal down. Sure you change pedal on every you don't have to change on this because this is static but then change 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 okay now hold hold the e through your next one the worst is when you go duh, dum. that's not it's that's that's the harmony so because chopin writes a half note on this c major harmony so make sure to hold it to change your pedal on this but keep holding the E and then more yes. <clears throat> notice that there's no fermata on the C in the left hand so I think the from uh, in the third note of that bar this is bar four that I'm talking about there's a fermata over this but there's no fermata over this so I don't think Chopin is calling for like a retard he doesn't want you to stop and then do that. I used to play it like that. If you listen to some, I've recorded this piece um, on a few different uh, albums throughout my life. And if you listen to my older recordings of it, 
first of all, they're a little slower, but I really almost do a fermata here. And as I've studied more, I've noticed, okay, I probably shouldn't have done a fermata on the, those notes. Let it flow. You can take a little breath, but not a big retard. And then I like to, I don't like to do this. Get ready for it so the audience knows something's coming up. Just find it. it. Okay? All right. Let's go over some basic technique that we could use to develop um, the, the fluidity in this. First of all, I want you to use every type of rhythm that you can think of. Okay, so two rhythms. And then do the opposite two rhythms. Then do three rhythms. And that's a three rhythm starting from the first note. Do it from the second note. So get rid of your first note. Okay, get rid of your first and second note, so you're starting from your third note, from this E. Okay, and so forth, and then four rhythms and five rhythms. You can also do a helpful rhythm that I went over um, in the Chopin Etude Opus 10 number four video. Um, it's three long, five short. Oh, you know what? No, we're not going to do that. Sorry, because these are in groups of six. Uh, I'm going to give you a new rhythm. You may not have uh, considered this one before. It's just a little uh, hybrid of this other rhythm that I taught in the Opus 10 number 4 video. Uh, do two long, four short. Because they're in groups of six, we're going to divide into groups of six. So we're going to go long, long, short, 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 long, long. Again, with rhythms, you always want your short notes to be in the tempo that you're shooting for. So you don't need to do as fast as I just did when you're first starting to learn the piece. You could do... But if you're polishing this up for a competition, you want it just a little extra edge with the tempo. Make sure that happens. Now, if you want to kind of uh, put this on steroids a little bit, um, you can expand it into a group of 12 and double it. So four short, or sorry, four long notes, eight short notes. Again, this is, that's a little bit more advanced, but what that does is it gives you a chance to bum, 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 and then the contrast of bum, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, bum, 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 like that. What that does is it allows your fingers to really lighten up. One thing you want to focus on is playing up and forte on your loud notes and then. So you don't want to play everything loud, just your your long notes, and then your short notes are super light. The contrast of that will actually help your hand to start loosening up even more because it gives you a point to put all your strength and then a point to lighten up. Okay, so now let's talk about... Thank you so much for watching. As with all pro practice videos, the first section is free. If you'd like to view the rest of this video or if you'd like to learn more about pro practice, just click on the link on this screen or on the link in the comments section below. Also, if you could like this video, share it, or leave a comment below so it can be shared with as many people as possible, I would truly appreciate it. Thank you so much for your support of pro practice.